find this uh, Psalm 139. This chapter 139. And. Yeah, it would have been a good song to sing. Oh. missing this this verse it's a wonderful psalm it says David wrote this song and he said search me O God and know my heart wow you know David loved God David wanted to know God, to have a really close relationship with him. He was willing to open his heart and give it to God and say, please, God, inspect my heart and tell me about what's, what you see there that's not pleasing to you. He says, if you find any sin in there, uh, David was humble and he wanted God inside his heart. He said, God, show me. And then he says, try me. It means test, test me. And know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. You know, David was honest with God. He didn't try to cover his sin. We, we should be the same way. We should desire that close relationship with God, God, with truth with God. Some people are honest, and some people try to hide their sin, and they lie, and they deceive. Their relationships don't last. They're real, they're real shallow. But if we're willing to open our hearts, and know we can have that close relationship. God is perfect, and we're not. But we want that perfect. We want that relationship, that close relationship with God, to be willing to give our hearts to Him. Not to, not to hide or cover things. The Bible says, if a person confesses his sin. He'll have a close relationship with God. But if he doesn't, their relationship will drift apart. You know, Adam in the garden, Adam and Eve, when they sinned, and what they do? They tried to hide. They tried to flee from God. And we need to run. We need to run to God. God, I did wrong. I did something bad. I made a mistake. Please help me. Show me what to do. How can I fix this? How can I improve? You know, we need to look into this verse for the new year. It'll help us. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, you know everything. You know what's good for us. Confession. Just to tell you, not try to hide things, 
I try to cover them up just to tell you, you know everything, right? But you want the truth. You want us to be honest with you. Have that close relationship. Please, help us to cherish you and to cherish our relationship with you, to be willing to confess to you, invite you to come into our heart and see what you find there. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, 2022 is gone. It's over. Now, it's 2023. We need to look back at the good things that happened and some bad things that happened. Yeah, there are some good things. And we've done some bad things. We've done good and bad things. We need to look back and ask God, God, what do you want me to do today? I see what I see my successes and failures in the past. Every person needs wisdom, you know, to make good decisions, to change our lives for the good. That requires wisdom to make the best decisions. For example, maybe a boy, you know, a young boy. He's playing in the street. And the cars, they're coming by. Right? Maybe another boy. Yeah. Here's the boy playing on the street, and the cars are coming by. He's in danger. A wise person will see him and try to explain to him, not to, you know, young man, it's time for, it's time, time for you to leave the street. But a foolish person will say, yeah, go home later. Now, I think I'll, I'll, I'll go to work on the street, right? I need to, I'm, oh, do my homework on the street. Okay, my decision will work better. Um, I will do homework in the road, right? That's a, that's a good decision for me, right? I want to stay right there. My parents want me there. Uh, I'll just do my homework right here in the, in the middle of the road. Uh, uh, mother or father say, no. First, leave. Come on. Get out of the road. Go in the house. And then do your homework. Right? That's, that's wisdom. Many times we're confused, right? We think, now I'm going to do this whole list of things. But say, but those things, you know, they're really not important. Put those off. First, do the important things. And God will let you know what to do first, what, how to order them. Here's a question. Can you and I ask for wisdom? Is it all right to ask for wisdom? And who do we ask? We ask God, right? Is that all right? Or is God too busy for you? Hey, God, can you take a minute? And uh, yeah, I just, I'm just coming here. I, I won't waste any of your time. No. Is, that, is that the way we ask God? God wants us to ask him. In all our ways, we need to ask him for all the things, and he will lead us into the right path. Also, remember, James says we must ask in faith. If we think, hmm, God, he's not going to help me, but I'll ask anyway. I'm going to pray and go through the motions, but I have doubts in my heart. I have doubts that he'll ever help me. The Bible says, 
That person that asks that way, he, he's not gonna he's not gonna get what he asked for. He needs to ask when he believing that God can help him. So here's a question for you. Do you believe God can help you? Let's read some of these this this verses and kind of go through it and accept God's the counsel from God in our lives. First, we need to understand God knows us. Maybe you remember a long time ago when you were small. You talk with your parents, discussing things, and you feel, you know, mom and dad, they, they don't really understand me. Hey, you know, you guys don't understand. There's another reason I want it. I want this. Another reason. Yeah, I don't think you have it right. You're not understanding what I'm trying to say. It happens, right? Why? Because people's knowledge is limited. But God's knowledge, he knows us. He knows everything about us. Notice in this verse, it says, O Lord, thou hast searched me, you know, Many people travel, you know, cr Christmas, New Year's, and all those other holidays. Uh, am I getting this? Test, right? T A S. Okay, Transportation Security Agency. Okay, we're like flying now. You know, they're at the airports, and there's these long lines, and yeah, everybody's waiting for the TSA. People will ask, and they'll ask you questions, and you, you go to the little desk, and you. You put your change and your everything out of your pockets in there, and then you got to take your shoes off, and then you walk through, and they put your hands over your head, and this little uh, this little X-ray machine that goes and takes a picture of you, and we sh and we should allow that. We must allow that. We, if we say no, guess what? You can't get on the plane. You're not flying anywhere. But here, God it searches me without, not like a TSA. He just knows me. He knows, the, he knows me inside and out. It says, God, thou hast searched me and hast known me. You've tested every part of me. You, thou, God, that, that's what it means, thou knowest my down-sitting and my uprising. You understand my thoughts afar, when you're far away. The things I think, I think, and, and you guys don't know what I'm thinking, right? I'm making, I'm having a thought, but God knows what I'm thinking. Right? God knows everything. The Bible says the Lord is great and his understanding is infinite. <laughs> That's a kind of a uh, did, did, didn't come out. It's not it's not going to show on Facebook. Yeah. I just uh, I'm advocating for you guys if you're watching us on Facebook. I know you can't see. This is the, the sideways eight. Right. You know how to sign that, right? Infinity. Yeah, infinity. Infinity. Uh, I've seen that. I still learned that at CSUN. <laughs> right? What is it? It means no limits. That's what it means. No limits. His, God's understanding, God's mind, there are no limits on it. My understanding, your understanding, yeah, I, I just, like, it, I, don't, I don't have much of a understanding compared to God's. It's like a pea, like a little pea 
compared to his understanding. But God, he understands everything. Wow. My body, yeah, he understands everything about that. My heart, God knows it. My lungs, you know, my breathing. He knows all of that. If I got an infection, he knows. If I have cancer, God knows, right? He knows everything. When I'm in pain, yes, God knows that. When I'm sad, when I'm angry, when I'm bitter, God knows everything. We need to understand that. God knows my future. Hmm? What do you mean? What do you mean? Yeah, he knows my future. The Bible says he knows the end from the beginning. Uh, in, the, in the Old Testament, uh, uh, he... Do you guys believe that? How are we supposed to respond to that kind of knowledge? We need to trust him. We need to confess. We need to give everything to him. Don't try to hide anything. Don't try to cover it up. God is the most wise. He loves the most. He is all-powerful. And because of that, we need to trust him, right? We need to trust him completely. The Bible said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Not part of your heart. Trust in the Lord. Not, don't trust in yourself. Not in your friends. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And we should do that. It's so important to be faith, to have faith in him. Second, David invited God to say, search me, O God. When, when he, he, he told him, yeah, go ahead, G gave God permission says, you've already searched me and known me. And that's in verse 1. And then you go down to verse 23. He says, God, do it again. Search me and know my heart. God, David wanted to be honest with God. Not hide things, not cover them up. We need to be the same way. He says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts thoughts you know sometimes we think you know I can I, I have thoughts on my own it's okay to have a bad thought it's it's okay yeah they, everybody else does right and they're fine It's okay for me to think and contemplate and meditate on things that I know I'm not supposed to. The Bible says no. The Bible's clear. Don't do that. Don't go there. Your thoughts should be pure. They should be. You know, God's thoughts are pure. God knows your thoughts. He knows your, what you're thinking about. He knows you should confess them. If you have a bad thought, say, hey, God, yeah, I'm sorry about this. I was dwelling on this. It's bad. Help me and forgive me. We should do that. We should be thankful to God for that. My thought and your thoughts, they're all known to God. Am I getting this right? Yeah, I should not be embarrassed about my thoughts. Because God knows them. God, I'm sorry.
Please forgive me for these thoughts. Please help me. Your, your mind, your thought process is so important. It should, we, sh we should keep it holy. My thoughts and my feelings, my desires, my wants, my plans, they should all be pure and holy. Here's a question for you. Do you ask God to search you and test you? We should. Every single day. We should do that. On it, be honest with God. Have that really close relationship with Him. Notice. Know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me. David wasn't perfect. We have, he had, wick, he had wickedness in him. For example, in the evening, David was looking and he saw this woman, right? And she was bathing herself. And David saw her, and he lusted after her. It should, if, when David saw her, he should have covered his eyes, looked away, and said, no, I shouldn't be looking at this. Hey, God, forgive me. Please help me. But he didn't. David looked, and then he continued to look, and he dwelt on it. And the desire built up inside of him, and he started making plans. He started meditating on it. He says, I'm going to call her to my throne. It's, when we see, when we have, feel our tendency to sin, immediately we need to stop right there, Put like the timeout in it and say, God, please help me with this. I'm sorry about that. Keep me pure inside. Thirdly, David invites the Lord to lead him. Yeah, isn't it? Is this a sign? Lead, right? That's clear. That's a pretty, pretty clear sign, right? Notice what he says. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. What does it say? In the way everlasting. There's two different, there's two opposites here. We see a wicked way and an everlasting way. We see two different ways, a wicked way and a right way. And David says, God, lead me in the right, in the right way. He doesn't say, show me. Well, that's a good start, you know, if God would just show him that. And that would be enough to show me and teach me, give me wisdom, right, to do all these things. For example, remember Solomon? He was full of wisdom, right? But he did wrong all the time. So wisdom is not enough. Lord, this way, the way everlasting, the right way, lead me that, that way. So wisdom is not enough. Help me to travel down that path, the way everlasting. Lead me there. Help me to follow that path. You first, and then I'll follow you. And I'll follow close behind. Give me strength. Give me wisdom. Help me to be successful following that path in that right way. David understood that wisdom is not enough. Help 
help helps, but he needs help, but he needs God's power to lead, and he needs God to lead him in that path, and he needs to follow God in that path. Do you ever feel weak sometimes? You feel you know you should you, you you should be there, right? This is I should do that. This is this is what's right for me, but God, I don't feel like I can make it there. I and I really don't want to do that. Like I'm tired, I'm not smart enough, I'm yeah. Just I know you want me to do this. Say, God, help me. You know you should be grateful to God, but you don't feel grateful. Please help me to, th to be thankful. I, I, I shouldn't complain, God, but it's, just, it's hard, you know, this, the situation I'm in. I don't like it. I, I don't want. I don't want to be part of it. I don't want to be in this situation. It makes me grouchy. God, please help me. I know I should tell my my mom. Did I get that right? My mom. I should say. I just, I, I need to be nice when I correct someone, but God, I really don't want to be nice. I want to I wanna just give them a piece of my mind. God, help me, please. Talk nice, kind, truth. Yeah, I need to tell them the truth, but let it be nice, let it be kind, not mean. Help me with this. Maybe, maybe here's an example. You know, before when you were uh, young, yeah, yeah, some people are some people are so young. But <laughs> you and I, when we were young, maybe in school, in exercising, in class, or playing football, or basketball, whatever. You should run it, be running, you know, and really testing, really, you know, stressing yourself. But you, sometimes you feel tired. You don't want to do that. I don't want to run, and I don't want to run that fast. You know, it causes me to be out of breath, you know. Co you know, your coach wants us to be better, always. He wants us to be better. God wants us to be better, always. To do to do our best always, but if we're going to do our best, we're, we're going to be tired. We're going to be tired. It's going to happen. And you, we don't like being tired. We we feel awful. You know, we're all out of breath and can't can't catch our breath. And <laughs> you know, we try to find ways to get back and get our catch our breath. And you lean against the wall and. You get thirsty, and you drink, and there's a little water fountain, and you're <laughs> trying to drink, and you're still out of breath. You drink a little bit more, and you're still out of breath. And you're tired. God, I don't want to do my best. I want to do half my best. Half, you know. I feel that ought to be enough, you know? God wants us to do our best, always. And it'll make us more tired, yeah. Please, God, help me. I don't want to, I don't want, I want to stop, I want to rest, I want to take a time out, uh, take a break, you know? I don't want to keep doing my best. God will help you. It's important every day to do our best.
please, lead me, help me. Wisdom is not enough. You, your power, your help, please, is what I need. The Bible says, talks about the way everlasting, the Holy Spirit in you and me will lead us in the way everlasting. The Holy Spirit inside of us, teaching us, convicting us, the Bible, God's Word inside of us as we apply it to our lives. God, your Word is right here. Life, power is in your Word. Help is in your Word. All I got to do is like read it and, and agree with it and take a step next step that God wants that we know God wants us to take please help me in doing that consider your life look back at the year 2022 your r o l e s roles Roles and goals. And we're gonna. So here's a te here's a question for y'all. Do you want to grow? Do you want to improve? Does God does God want you to stay the same? Or does He want us to improve? Right? Yeah. He sent His Son Jesus Christ. We need to think about. I'm trying to see how that relates to what you're saying. Roles are responsibilities. This is where we think. That, see, I want to improve in the things that God wants me to do. I want to be better. I want to behave better. For example, my first role, my first responsibility, is I'm God's child. I want to walk with God closer. Think about, hmm. Think about one, one to five. It's awful. Five is good. One is, one is bad, five is good. Think about yourself. You're, you're doing an evaluation now. You're walking with, how was your walk with God? Ask yourself, is it a five, four, three, two, one? How's it, how is it? How's your faith? Is it a five or is it a one? Or somewhere in the middle? Think about your purity. Five, four, three, two, one. How, how, how are we doing with that? Your testimony before the world. How does the world see you? How does the world see me? What does the world see? As the world looks at you, looks at you, say, hmm, this is a Christian. I can tell. He's nice. He's friendly. He's loving. Yep. He belongs to Jesus. How's your family? Ask yourself. Maybe you're a mom, maybe you're a dad, maybe you're a grandma or grandpa, a husband, a wife, a son, a daughter, brother, sister. How are you doing in that? Five, four, three, huh? How how would you what grade would you give yourself? Your relationship with other people, your friends. Other Christians, how are you doing? You know, what kind of grade do you think you deserve? Your influence for other people, to other people. Is that good? 
Are you like way up there at the big numbers or you got this, you're in the small numbers? How about your witnessing? How are you doing with that? Five, one, somewhere in the middle? How about your time? How do you use your time? Do you use it wisely? Do you use it for eternal things? Or do you waste it? Your, your physical health. How do you take care of yourself? Yeah. You don't worship the body. No, you don't do that. But you do take care of the body. How are you doing with that? Five, four, three, two, one. Where, where are you doing? How, how about your financial situation? Are you, use, are you using your finances wisely? Or are you just wasting, wasting your money? Think about these things. Maybe some, maybe some you have, you know, some fives and fours, and, and some others you have like ones and twos. Ask God, God, how do I improve? Search me. Know me. Tell me what to do. How do I improve these things? How, what's the most important thing to do first? My family or my relationship with you? My time, how do I manage it? How do I improve? How do I improve on 2022? The good stuff and the bad stuff. How am I doing that now? How, I'm going to do about that. Ask yourself these things. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you today that we can be here, gathered together in your house with your people, Please, work in our hearts. Give us wisdom. Help us to know what to do, how to change, how to improve. Please, help us and lead us. So, let's keep, be quiet now. See, is everyone here saved? If you're saved, raise your hand. Please. Do you believe God knows you and I? Do you believe he can lead us? Yes? Are you willing to give him everything? Confess honestly. Are you willing? Not trying to cover or hide anything. Do you thank God for your salvation? That you're a new person? You have a new mind. You have new desires. New interests. You have new power with the Holy Spirit living inside you. You have wisdom that we can change. The Bible will help us know what to do, how to think, how to feel. Ask God. God, what do I do from this point forward, this new year? What can I do with it? How should I change? If you're not saved, oh, wow, that's the most important thing. <coughs> that should be first on your list. No, not, no, don't, don't even worry about any of the other things. Don't worry about the everlasting. It's like the kid playing in the street. Yeah. First, what's the most important thing a kid playing in the street? Get out of the street. And the same thing here. Your soul is the most important thing to you. You know, you don't, we don't know that we have a future. Today may be the day of, that you die. Don't, don't put this decision off. Jesus is truly God. And hell is a real place of suffering. And, but Jesus died on the cross. To pay for your sins. And he wants you to trust him now. He doesn't want you. He wants to for forgive your sins. Don't, don't put this decision off. Believe. Jesus is truly God. He's the only Savior. The only way to heaven. 
and he, he, will, he will save you, he, him and him alone, 100%. Don't think about anything else right now. Think about only you and your relationship with God. Father, work in, the, work in hearts today. If someone's not saved, please work in their hearts. Help them to be, become saved right now. For the Christians, help us to know what to do, how to change, what to do first, what to do second. Oh. Give us wisdom. Lead us. It's not enough to know. It's not enough to have wisdom. We need your help. We need your leading. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.